This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1444, brought to you by American Harvest. It seems like every time you turn around, it's time to vaccinate your horse for something. So, Dr. Latcher from Spring Hill Equine joins Jamie Jennings to explain how vaccines actually work. And we'll get right to our tip after we hear from Debbie Laux, host of the Horsemanship Radio Show, on how the transition horses at Flag is Up Farms are doing on American Harvest Natural Hemp Pellets. Let's talk about American Harvest. I spoke with the founder, John Paracha, this last week to share how well our transition horses are responding to his equine hemp pellets. That's what we've been feeding them while they're being trained for their next homes through adoption. Equine hemp utilizes their raw CBD technology and was designed by their veterinarian, Dr. Silver. They proudly utilize no chemical processing in the manufacturing of equine hemp, and it comes in four pound, two pound, and one pound packages. To get some for your horse today, go to ahihemp.com. That stands for American Harvest. So it's ahihemp.com. And it is that time of the year where we need to start thinking about our spring vaccines. And we've got Dr. Latcher of Spring Hill Equine to talk to us. Uh, good morning, Dr. Erica. So let's get on track here and talk a little bit about vaccines. I've got my vet appointment scheduled for two weeks from now. And good for I, you. What, what do my horses need? What, what spring vaccines? Well, So a lot of that is very dependent on the part of the country that you live in. For instance, I am in Florida and we have the encephalitis. So that's the Eastern encephalitis in West Nile. We have them 24-7, 365. Um, If you've ever been in a swampy area of Florida, you'll find that there are mosquitoes out the day after it's been 30 degrees. They, They have no mercy on our souls down here. Um, so we strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that horses get the encephalitis vaccines every six months. Um, if you have a show horse, they're also going to need the rhinopneumonitis and the influenza vaccines. Uh, and if they're showing in USEF sanctioned shows, they will have to have that vaccine every six months. Um, in addition, we, we recommend rabies for every horse once a year. Um, rabies in horses is a very different disease than what we've all read about in Cujo and, you know, Old Yeller and all of those um, horses get a low level colic for about three days before it becomes evident that something is weird here. So you've been exposed, your friends have been exposed, who've helped you with this, the vet's been exposed, you know, so we strongly recommend rabies vaccinations. Wait a second. Um, from there, I, did not, I, I guess I didn't realize that that horses, the, their rabies, they not they're not frothing at the mouth trying to bite you like like old yeller because that's that's I think most people's experience with rabies is seeing old. Uh, let's not get to the end yep. of it, okay? Let's not ruin. Let's yeah, not no, 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 spoil it. To to <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I I guess I I would have always thought that a horse would have been frothing at the mouth and and aggressive that's not at all what it is for horses no and in fact there there's two different kinds that we frequently see and and we don't see it a lot in the united states luckily but um there's two main ways that we see rabies in horses and one is that low level like you know, if you've got some vanamine, you may give it to them and you're like, ah, you know, if he doesn't get better, I'll call the vet, but they never really get bad, but they never really get better. And so eventually you call your veterinarian and we come out. And again, for us, we look at them and we say, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a colic, but we can't really put our finger on why they're not better. We do some things and usually in about two to three days, things change dramatically. And then we're looking at a horse that is getting into a little bit more of that aggressive stage. They become much more neurologic or wobbly, you know, ataxic is our fancy word for it. Um, And then we start saying, okay, something weird is going on here. Um, The other way that we see it that is also equally, um, you, you expose a lot of people basically is the problem. You'll have a wound that your horse has and they itch it incessantly. 
and nothing we do manages that itch. And that is actually the rabies virus traveling from that wound up the nerves toward the brain. Okay. So you've got this horse that has all of the, let's go back to the first one. So <laughs> as, as a vet, you're looking at eh, just kind of this, kind of that. Is there a blood test? I mean, because I know that with like possums or they have to go capture it and cut its head off and expect its brain. And we've had to do that too. It's ain't yep. fun. Ugh. Yeah, no, it's all no, so, it's not fun. So, what do you do with that's horses? Ex- that's unfortunately that's the only way we know that a horse actually had had rabies as well. Um, we don't have a blood test for the disease at all, no matter what species it is. Um, and so, like I said, it ends up being our clinical judgment as we're watching this colic turn into something that is very not normal. Um, and that's, it, it's, they're very tough calls. They're very tough cases. It's an easy, very, very, very effective vaccine. And, you know, you don't want to get exposed to rabies. You don't want to have your kids exposed, your neighbor, your friends. You know, we all involve lots of people when something's weird with our horses because, you know, you have to call all your friends. Um, so lots of people get exposed when horses have rabies. And so the vaccine is strongly, strongly, strongly recommended for every horse. I know we're talking about vaccines, but I, th- that leads me to ask the next question. So we <laughs> we had, on rabies, we had a raccoon that was in my horse's stall on our first farm, and it was in the rafter right above the horse's head when we came out in the morning. So we brought the horse out of there. I shot the raccoon because it didn't look good. And then we had to do the whole bring it in. I didn't cut its head off. We brought the whole thing in. Um, is it the brain tissue they have to test, by the way? Is that why you have to bring the head in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we test the brain tissue. Okay, to got it. There's um, the rabies virus in there. So the horse had the rabies vaccine and everything, but yet they still quarantined the horse and, you know, everything. We had to quarantine everything. The state came out and all of that. And any and the two horses that were so, beside each of that horse's stall also were quarantined. Why do we still have to quarantine if they have the vaccine? Um, no vaccine is 100%. And the thing about rabies is that it kills people. So we take that that disease very, okay, very, there's very that. seriously. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what generally happens is if you can prove, and by prove we mean that a veterinarian has given your rabies vaccine, um, that your horse has been vaccinated, uh, at least in the state of Florida. Now, every state varies, but your horse would be vaccinated again for rabies. So no matter what. Um, yeah, they did I would that. come out, revaccinate your horse right then, and the quarantine would be 10 days. It's not a significant quarantine. It's just a, in case there was a break in this vaccine, it's going to take about 10 days. It's actually going to take about five days for the horse to show it. The way we do quarantines is we sort of double that time frame. So we would quarantine your horse for about 10 days. As long as everything looks good at that point, everybody would be released and you could then go on to breathing and living life normally. Okay, so the the quarantine, uh, you've got this horse that you think has rabies. You, as a human, you've seen the your your farm manager calls you and goes, ah, you know what? I think your horse is colicking. You come out. You're like, oh, I don't know. Let me call my friend who knows a lot about horses. And she comes out and she sees the horse. And then you're like, yeah, we got to call the vet. So then the vet comes out, the vet assistant comes out. And then all of a sudden you've got five people that are surrounding Mm -hmm. this potentially rabid horse, which of course nobody knows is potentially rabid. What happens to those people in this? Because you go, okay, the horse has rabies. um, You know, we think it has rabies. What happens to the humans? Do they get to go live their life or are they quarantined too? <laughs> they, well, usually we can control people from biting other people. Uh, not always, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. usually. So we're not putting them usually. in a stall for six months? So, so, no. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but with people, what we then do is we you go to, uh, typically your county health department has the shots on hand at all times. Um, and you get what we call the prophylactic series for rabies. So In your belly, right? you get a three shot series. Uh, luckily, no more. It's it's oh. more of like a flu shot. Yay. Okay. Um, I will tell you, having been vaccinated for rabies, um, we're required to be vaccinated during vet school. Um, having been vaccinated, it, it is a, a vaccine that is relatively painful for a few days, but that's better than getting rabies. So I'll take it. 
I've always said that too. You know, you've got your vet comes out. You, in, rabies is typically an elective thing. I elect to do it because I live in Arizona, and it's not that I'm worried about a mountain lion coming in and biting my horse. You know, but I am worried about the bats. You know, we do have a yeah. lot of bats that kind of fly overhead, so I always worry about that. So I vaccinate, and people always go, "Oh, it's okay." You know, I'll just I'll say, it's twenty dollars versus death. You know, I mean, right. to me, it's a very sensible vaccine to get 20 bucks or death. But what I am curious about, and, and this is a question for all vaccines, you give the rabies, you know, say once a year to dogs. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. there's a big problem that dogs, small dogs get the same dose as big dogs, which get the same dose as horses and humans, I think, even get the same vaccines, even though I had to pay $350 for mine. It's ridiculous. I, I know. Isn't that crazy? Vet. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, let me get started here. <laughs> uh, but so, uh, oh, my horse needs a vaccine. He needs his rabies shot. He got it once a year. He gets it last year. Do, okay. Why am I vaccinating my horse every 365 days to the T? Like, don't, is there, is there a window of like the a vaccine at 365 days? Go say, eh, I'm not going to work anymore. Or is this just a guess? Should you do titers? Should we in, inject that into your, to your, uh, you know, stable management plan? Explain that. Yeah. So your horse is getting vaccinated for rabies in particular every 365 days because he has a crappy immune system and that's just what horses do. Okay. Um, the, the rabies vaccine is, is good in horses. The research tells us for about 14 months. I don't know about you, but I can't do anything on a 14 month schedule. Like that's not going to work well for me. So I I need my life easy. Um, so once a year works well. (laughs) Um, so that's why on horses for that vaccine, um, we can do a titer for rabies. Uh, We recommend that on horses who respond, um, you know, there's a group of horses that you give a vaccine and they just, they have horrible reactions. And we have two in my practice, so it's not terribly common, but, you know, it does happen. When we have titered those horses rather than vaccinating them, we honestly only get two years out of a rabies vaccine on those horses. So, you know, they still need to be vaccinated and it's still important. We just get a little bit longer out of them. Um, the yeah. average horse is somewhere around 14 months. Now, the thing about the immune vaccines and the immune system to back up a little bit is that the what is in that shot is not actually calculated to the size of a horse. It is calculated to the responsiveness of the equine immune system. So a mini and a draft horse essentially have the same immune system. Um, so what we're doing is putting in um, a little bit of virus and saying, here's what you need to look for. And so that dose has been calculated to be the proper amount for to get the attention of the equine immune system. Now, that immune system has a really bad memory. We can give an encephalitis vaccine and pull titers about seven months later and find that those titers have gone from being very high at two to three months to dropping precipitously starting at about six months. Wow. So if you are in an encephalitis area like Florida, like I said, we have it all the time. It is incredibly important that you vaccinate your horses every six months because their immune system forgets that we showed them this virus six months ago. And that, part of it is the, that, yeah. No, I was just going to say that's the best explanation I've ever heard about vaccines because I always just wondered why, why do I have to do this again? Because <laughs> horses are really bad at vaccines. <laughs> oh my gosh. Really, I, really bad at it. <laughs> well, we have about two months of mosquitoes in Arizona. Um, being that I'm on an irrigated horse property, right about July and August, we get, we get mosquitoes pretty fierce. So I always booster them. Right, kind of at the start of the summer, uh, for the West Nile virus and and all of the encephalitis mm-hmm. viruses are vaccines kind of come uh, at least once a year. So, um, is the is it important to? I guess not important. Are there things that people do differently in different parts of the country, or is it a basic standard? Here's your card of vaccines that you have to give. <laughs> We, at the very minimum, recommend Eastern encephalitis, Western encephalitis, tetanus. 
rabies and West Nile, uh, every, well, we do the, the West Nile and the EWT shot every six months here in Florida and the rabies once a year. Now, if you are not in the Gulf Coast states where we have mosquitoes all the time, you can certainly go to once a year vaccinations. Most people do that in the spring because that makes sense, like you just said, with mosquito season for most of the area. Now, if summer is lasting a little bit longer and you're seeing mosquitoes longer, then you really do want to vaccinate those horses twice a year. If it's a young horse, less than three years old, or an older horse, their immune system also starts to get a little senile. Um, you want to vaccinate them three times a year to make sure they're protected all the time. Because those, while they start forgetting at about six months in normal middle-aged horses, the young and the old forget sooner. Wow. So those okay. guys, we actually bump up. Yeah. Well, I have a horse that's so. They, a lot of it has to do with the, yeah, the the kind of the exposure level that your horse will have. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then, so, so I have a horse that's 23 and he massively has started colicking every time he gets vaccines. And at this point I'm kind of like, well, do I even vaccinate him anymore? Should I run titers? <laughs> what do you, what do you recommend for that? Like how old, like, when do you call it? When do you say, okay, like, cause to me, I'm like, you know what? It's not <laughs> worth the colic that he, and, and pain he goes through to vaccinate, vaccinate him anymore here yeah. at this point. For those guys, we generally, we try really hard to pre-manage them for vaccines. We'll pre-medicate them for a couple of days ahead of time with a little bit of anti-inflammatories like butyrbanamine. Okay. Um, I, sometimes we'll go to more powerful ones, but those can interfere with the vaccines as well. So I only use those in very specific cases. Um, you know, we'll spread out vaccines. We'll go down to a minimum. Those are the horses that we go down to absolute minimums on vaccines. You know, like we would do the EWT and the West Nile before your mosquito season. Mm -hmm. And we would hold off on the rabies and do it at a different time of the year. You can gotcha. certainly titer those guys. Um, a little bit of the trick with the rabies, we know what the titer needs to be to be protective. What titers are measuring is basically how good was the body's response to the vaccine. Um, with the encephalitis and the West Nile, we don't necessarily have a great idea what the right answer is on that. Mm -hmm. um, we know what the right answer is for some pretty serious challenges in a laboratory setting. Mm -hmm. So if we take this horse and we directly inject West Nile virus, like, you know, boom, we take a big bunch of it and we put it right in there. We know what they need to protect against that. We don't have a good idea in the natural environment. So, okay. you know, we'll pull titers on those guys. It's not always very clear. And on a horse like that that's colicking, you know, I may say like, yeah, let's pull some titers and see if we can get an answer for you. Okay, cool. So. Well, Dr. Latcher, what is your website? Uh, you're just such a pleasure to talk to. If people yeah. want to find out more about you or call you out to their farm, where can they find you? Uh, we are everywhere as Spring Hill Equine. So our website is springhillequine.com and you can find us on Facebook as Spring Hill Equine as well. Um, and our office cat, Tony, he's a great guy. He blogs on various topics every week and he just did a great blog on vaccines and went a little bit more into depth on some of the stuff that we've talked about. So, I'm sorry. Did you he, just uh, say your, loves fans. your office cat blogged about vaccines? Mm-hmm. Okay, just check. He does. Just he blogs every Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> yep. seems very normal. Okay. Very I busy. love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> SpringHillEquine.com. Dr. Erica Latcher, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope we get to talk again very soon. You're very welcome. You guys have a great day. You do. Bye. And that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for tuning in. You can find all of the Horse Radio Network shows on your phone. That's right. Go to your phone's app store and download the free Horse Radio Network app and have all of your favorite shows with you wherever you go. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>